Right, hi guys, welcome to another episode of The Cruel Wall. Yes, that's right, we're back for episode two following the Chinese Grand Prix. And yeah, it was an interesting race. We started off on intermediates, barring one ballsy driver, who we'll get to in a second. And yeah, went was a good race, I enjoyed it, really enjoyed it. Not sure what all this new uh, thing is about spinning behind virtual safety cars and safety cars and things. That seems to be a new thing that F1 drivers do these days, but pfft. yeah. Who knows? Anyway, <clears throat> without further ado, let's kick off with the winner, Lewis Hamilton. Qualified pole, led every lap, won the race. I can't find minus points in that because he didn't even moan today, which is a shame because I'd like to give him minus points, but I can't. And as he dominated the weekend, as he did, and it was all right in the interviews and stuff as well. I've got no, I've got no complaints from this weekend. I really haven't, which is a shame because I don't like giving him points. But I'm going to have to, and it's going to have to be a solid ten points for Lewis Hamilton because I can do no other. I can do no other. I apologise to the Hamilton haters, but to the Hamilton lovers, there you go. I am fair. All right. Yeah, <clears throat> got no problems with him. Can't query anything. Next up, Sebastian Vettel, qualified P2. Finish P2. Might have had the measure on Hamilton had it not been for the virtual safety car and the safety car and the way that worked out. We're not going to know. It was unfortunate they got caught up in that, but a good uh, good drive for him to get back into P2 because he was down to P6 at one stage. So a good drive from Vettel. Could he have done more? If there weren't the safety cars and the virtual safety cars, I think maybe he could have got Hamilton, but that's how the race works, isn't it? That is how a race works. You have you have things like this happen. So you can't plan it. So I think Vettel did a decent race. He had he congratulated Hamilton as Hamilton congratulated him at Australia. There seems to be a nice rivalry there. No animosity, so I like it. So Vettel, you did a solid drive. Put Ferrari back where it belongs, I believe. Vettel has done a good job. So I'm going to give him nine points. Did very good. Very well, Vettel, very well. Now, we come to the wonder kid, Max Verstappen. Max Verstappen. What a drive. What a drive. Started in 16th place, I believe, 17th, somewhere like that. Couldn't qualify due to his... Well, he did qualify, but was never going to get out of Q1 with, uh, with misfires on his engine. Wasn't his fault. What can you do? And, yeah... Amazing first lap, up from what, 16th or 17th, all the way up and up to P9. What a drive. What a drive. So, Max Verstappen is going to be the first driver this year that I'm going to score more than 10 points to. He's going to get 11 for that drive, because that was bloody brilliant. He kept that race entertaining all the way through. The one mistake he made was he went slightly wide and let... Right, and back through, I think it was of probably Vettel. But apart from that, faultless drive. Absolutely faultless, can't fault a thing. Solid drive for Verstappen, put a Red Bull back on the podium, first time this year. Awesome stuff, really good drive, really good drive from Verstappen, well impressed. Next up, Daniel Ricciardo, again another good race, a solid race from Ricciardo. Um, should he have finished ahead of Verstappen? Well, you'd like to think so, considering that Verstappen started all the way down there, but Verstappen's just a master in the wet. Uh, but Ricardo still a solid race. P4, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Good to see Red Bull dicing it and mixing it up there. Finished ahead of a Ferrari and a Mercedes. So, awesome stuff by Mr. Ricardo there. So, I'm going to give him... I'm going to give him eight points, just because he was off the podium. And he was outshone by Verstappen. But apart from that... A solid drive. He deserves eight points. Really good. Really good from Ricardo. Uh, next up comes Kimi Raikkonen. <sighs> Quick and easy. Average. Average, but it was below... I would get him slightly above average last time for an average performance, so it's slightly below for an average performance this time. Four points. Book your ideas up, Raikkonen, for fuck's sake. There's, I want two Ferraris on the podium, or at least battling with the Mercedes, for God's sake. But you're just not doing anything. I know he had problems with... Uh, lack of power coming out of turn 12, I understand that, yeah, but just get on with it, for God's sake, do something, impress me, Raikkonen, prove that you should have been here this year, because I don't think you should have been, so come on, Raikkonen, let's get on with it, shall we? So, next up, P6, Valtteri Bottas, what a shit race, what a shit race, out-qualified 
by Vettel by a thousandth of a second uh, for P2. So, you know, that was unfortunate, but I'm not holding that against him. And then in the race, spun behind the safety car. Yeah. Twice. Yeah, he spun, then tried getting going and spun again. Not wise, not wise. A below par performance there by Bottas. In a car that should do better. So, unfortunately, outshone by his teammate all weekend. Had that silly mistake and only finished P6 in a car that should really... It should be winning. It should be a winning car. Um, so, I'm going to give you five points. Average performance, Bottas. Book your ideas up, Sonny. Next up, Carlos Sainz. He's the one, the only driver to start the race on the any slick tyre. Everyone else was on the intermediates. I think he was on the super softs. Uh, and what a race by him. Obviously, he lost a lot of places and a lot of time uh, at the start and the early laps of the race. Spun behind the virtual safety car. He's another spinner. Uh, tagged the wall as well, I saw on the replay. Not that they showed you that too much on the highlights, uh, but he did tag the wall with the rear corner as he tried getting going again. And he was lucky to carry on. But, you know, he was on slick tyres on a wet track. He finished P7. I think that was a blinding drive by him. And he had nothing to lose, really, qualifying 11th. <laughs> if it had been lower down the field, I'd have understood a bit more, but I, 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 I admire his bravery for going for it and telling the team, no, let's do this, we can get points. And he did it. So, Carlos Sainz, very good drive, very good drive. I'm going to score you seven points for that, only because you uh, did have a spin. And, you you know, I admire you for your ballsy move, and scoring, you know, seventh is Amazing for uh, Toro, so out outscored Williams and Force India this weekend, so that's really good. Um, coming up then to Mr. Kevin Magnussen, my boy. I knew he'd come in, I knew he'd come in. I get him minus one because I thought he would deliver, and he's delivered four points for the Haas team, first points of the season for Haas, albeit Grosjean should have had some in Australia, wasn't Grosjean's fault, but anyway. Kevin Magnussen, amazing drive, came from P12 to P8, so didn't gain that many places, but, you know, you can't argue it. You've got to set the points when they come and the opportunities. He certainly did. I'm pleased for you, Magnussen, and you've proved me right for once. Thank God for that. His first point since Russia last year, um, or first eighth place since Russia last year, I should say. So, you know, it's been a long time coming, almost a year. So, yeah, good old K-Mag, good old K-Mag. I'm going to give you... Going to give you a... Ooh, what shall I give him? I'm just toying between two. I'm going to give you eight, just because I like you, K-Mag. And I gave you minus one before, and I did think that were not that harsh. But eight points for K-Mag. He scored points for Haas, and well chuffed. Uh, next up was Sergio Perez. And hooray! Hallelujah! We've got someone that actually has listened to me and thought, do you know what? Lance Stroll is that dangerous... I have seen the cruel wall. I have seen the moaning Yorkshireman go on about how dangerous he is on his Twitter feed. I'm going to take him out before he can cause any problems. And yes, you certainly did, Mr. Perez. You took him out. Got him beached in that gravel on lap one. God, I bet his dad's not pleased with him. But yes, Mr. Stroll, his father's not going to be happy at that, is he? Not going to be happy at all with that. But yes, Sergio Perez, finished P9. Uh, could have had P8, but lost it towards the end. But again, it took out Lance Stroll, and that's all that matters to me. So, Mr. Sergio Perez, you can have, for your efforts of... I'm going to score you six points for your race, and I'm going to award you five bonus points for taking Stroll out. So you're going to get 11 as well. There we go. So, drivers, F1 drivers, if you're watching, Perez has listened to me. If you take out Lance Stroll, I will give you bonus points. So, there we go. Next up was Esteban Ocon, another solid 10th place, his second race with Force India, his second point. Only just behind his teammate this time, so a lot better effort by Ocon. I'm going to score him 7 again. I'm going to score him 7 again, because, again, it was, it was there or thereabouts. Fairly good effort, fairly good effort. And then we come to Roman Grosjean, who unfortunately had a spin in Quali 1, uh, which flat spotted his tyres, so he had to pit, go back out again, and... On his lap that he had to do to get into Q2, he uh, encountered a stricken vehicle. And unfortunately, that meant that he had to back off and not get through to Q2. Which is unfortunate for Grosjean, but it was a master of his own demise. If it had not spinning the first time, it had probably been safe. 
Uh, came all the way up to 11th, just missing out on points. An unfortunate race, overshadowed by uh, K Mag scoring his points. So I'm going to award Grosjean five points. And I'm surprised that it was K Mag that scored the points first, but fortune. It's just how it goes in Formula One, isn't it? So then we come to. Who is it? Oh, it's Nico Hulkenberg after. Uh, Roman Grosjean and Hulkenberg, I was expecting points this weekend, I really was. Qualified 7th, mega effort, and he just blew it in the race. Overtook two cars twice during safety car and virtual safety car periods. Uh, I don't know, I didn't see any of the footage to prove that he did it, but he says it was an unfortunate event of how it happened. He went past a spinning car that had recovered and obviously was meant to wait behind it and things like that. But I don't know the full ins and outs, but at the end of the day, he got 15 seconds worth of time penalties, which did cost him. It did cost him time. Uh, it would have put him closer to the top 10, probably on the edge of just getting 10th. But I was expecting more from him anyway. I was expecting him to be sort of around the seventh area. And he didn't deliver. So poor old Ulkenberg, and I really like Ulkenberg, and this is going to pain me to do it, but I'm going to have to just give you four points. And I'm sorry for that. <clears throat> I really am, but I wanted you to do better than what you did. And you didn't. Now, coming up next, in P13, one place behind his teammate, is Jolian Palmer. Or shall I call him Jolioff Palmer? So, let's swap his name. Jolioff. <clears throat> Jolioff Palmer, uh, yeah, pitted on the uh, green, frag, green flag lap, at the end of the green flag lap, <clears throat> to switch onto slicks, and did really shit on them. Shitter than science did. Uh, spun a couple of times on those, behind virtual safety car and safety car, and yeah, did nothing to get anywhere near the points. So, <clears throat> congratulations to Jolioff Palmer there for doing, once again, a below average performance. Uh, and yes, Julius Palmer, what we're going to give him. I don't know, I can't be as harsh as minus 83.2, can I? No, but he still doesn't deserve points, so I'm going to give him minus, minus 10. Minus 10 for Julius Palmer. You're still doing nothing to impress me, buddy. Book your ideas up, son. Book your ideas up. And uh, yeah, so as we go to P14. Who could be in P14? It's only bloody Felipe Massa, isn't it? I was singing his praises. I was singing his praises in Australia. And genuinely, I don't know what happened to him in this race. I think he had to pit twice, or I don't know. But he was just nowhere near. He was nowhere near. He was on the edge of points briefly, and then pitted again and whatever. But he just didn't have the pace, so it makes you wonder if the Williams is struggling in the wet. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's... Uh, it was a below average performance by Felipe Massa after qualifying sixth again. Uh, and yeah, unfortunately, didn't deliver. So you're only getting two points. I'm going to be really cruel with you there, Massa, because, you know, it was a shite performance by you. Oh, my phone's just gone off. Oh, it's Jamie, Ga Jamie uh, JD Gaming. Jamie Day there. And he tells me to tell me on the cruel wall. Tell uh, everyone that Jolian Palmer is a fucking idiot. So yeah, thank you JD Gaming. I've already done him. I've already minus him 10 points, pal. And thank you very much for texting while I'm doing the cruel wall. I appreciate it. So next up is after Massa, Max Ericsson. Going to Q2 again. Was that because of his misfortunes with his teammate? Possibly. Um, but again, a solid performance in qualifying, but this race didn't deliver, he was a lonely 15th, lonely on his own. Uh, so yeah, I can't really score him too highly. It was unfortunate, but you know, he did do, yeah, uh, what can you do? So, I'm going to give you five, five points for Marcus Ericsson. He only lost one place in the race, but he was the last of the finishers for Marcus Ericsson. Unfortunate, but there you go. Uh, next up is Fernando Alonso, the, the first of the retirements, and Alonso is driving the bloody wheels off that McLaren, getting it into places that car doesn't deserve to be, and I think the trouble is, he's driving it that hard that the car can't cope, and that's why he's breaking down. And 
I felt so sorry for him. He was battling with signs for seventh place. You know, he was having a good race, you know, and the, just the speed difference when it showed you on board with Bottas. And he just, it was like he was passing a bloody cyclist. It was unreal how slow that McLaren was compared to the Mercedes of Bottas. He'd overtaken him before the corner. Um, so, yeah, Fernando Alonso, you drove your heart out, mate, and I can't, you know, you did, you did provide us with a good race until it was a suspected drive shaft or something like that when... Uh, it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating because it could have been points on two occasions now for McLaren because of Fernando Alonso, but it isn't because of their shit car. Um, so I'm going to give you 10 points, Alonso. You might not have earned actual points, but you certainly earned my respect this year for those two race performances. You've driven the wheels off that thing. 13th again in qualifying, racing in 7th and 8th, battling. Yeah. You're putting that car where it doesn't belong, and I respect you for that, Alonso, so 10 points for you, pal. Uh, next up is Stoffel van Dorn. And again, outshone, outshone by Alonso. Van Dorn needs to do better. You really need to put your ideas up. I know you've got a crap car, and I know you retired again because they're a problem, but you were nowhere near in Alonso's league before your retirement. So, what am I going to do with you, van Dorn? I really, really like you. And I think you deserve an F1 seat, but at the minute you're not proving it to me. I know the car's shit, I know the car's shit, but it just won't do it. But I think there's more to get out of that car, as Alonso's proven. So, you know, Van Dorn, book your ideas up. Two points. Come on, Van Dorn, for fuck's sake. Right, the next one. Antonio Giovinazzi. <laughs> From Wonder Kid to Wonder Wall. He found the wall twice, once in qualifying, that let him get into Q2, but I'm not even using that as a positive, because he would have been out of Q2, which is, you know, which is fine. He would have been out of Q1. I, 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 don't, I don't care. Um, but yeah, Antonio Giovinazzi, you did nothing, mate. I'm so sorry to say it, but you've gone... You've gone down. Not in my estimations, but I just really wanted you to have another solid race. Prove that you deserve to be there, and instead you've done a shitload of damage to two cars. Well, to one car twice, but... Yeah. Unfortunate for Giovinazzi. Can I rate him? Of course I can. It was his fault he crashed. And I'm going to have to score you zero. I can't score you anything other than Giovinazzi, and it's such a shame. But you've not... You didn't deliver. You didn't deliver on what you promised in Australia after that fantastic drive. Um, so... Giovinazzi, I still love you. Yeah, I still think you deserve an F1 seat, but you should have just calmed it down a touch. You know, you wanted to prove to the world that you deserved a race seat. Even if you're just that bit slower than Ericsson, would it have really mattered? Did you need to push that hard? Did you need to pit for them slick tyres? You know, it doesn't. It didn't matter. You're at the back of the grid anyway. Just have a solid race and get some laps under your belt. But I can appreciate you're a racer and you pushed it, but it didn't work for you, so zero points. And last but not least, it is... Oh, oh, it is. It certainly is, isn't it, guys? It is the mighty, the absolutely stupendous, the taken out on one lap, but that's worth £75 million, Lance Stroll! Hooray! Woo! Lance Stroll. What did he do? Qualify P10. Am I, am I pleased with this? Am I going to say, oh, great drive by Stroll? Of course I'm not, because the car is meant to be there. He's finally got the car where it deserves to be. That does not want credit him for it. You know, so don't get me started on that. Uh, take that on lap one by Perez. I've already scored a Perez the uh, bonus points for that, because that was brilliant. Uh, but yeah, Lance Stroll. What do I score you? Can't judge you on the race, but I'm just pleased someone took you out before you took them out. So, you know, Lance Stroll, I gave... Daniel Ricciardo, middle of the road five, because he couldn't deliver in the race. And that's what I'm going to do with Lance Stroll. Middle of the road five, just because of the fact that I couldn't see you crash into anyone, because someone took you out before. Secretly, I'm pleased, in case you didn't know. Um, <clears throat> oh, I've missed Kvyatov. Have I? Oh, yes, I've missed Daniel Kvyatov. What a dick. Uh, Kvyat was in 16th. Oh yes, this is Kvyat. He had a suspected high steering uh, power steering failure, <clears throat> uh, which was unfortunate. It was it had been in the points again, 
uh, maybe just one ahead or one below of Carlos Sainz. Um, so yeah, an unfortunate race for Daniel Kvyat. Um, and yeah, up until that race, he was doing all right again. So I'm going to score him... I, I don't know. I'm going to score him six, just because I can't keep giving Toro so the same bloody points. And he didn't deserve eight again. So six points for Kvyat, uh, but a solid drive until the power steering failure. Now, Pascal Verlein missing again. Missing again from a race. Uh, and what do we do about that? I think there's something more to just this fitness malarkey. I personally think that Mercedes haven't been paying the bill to get him in that race car. Is my honest opinion. I've no no knowledge on that at all. Just my honest opinion. The way that everyone's sticking up for him is suspicious. You're not telling me that if they'd have paid money, if you know, if Mercedes had paid money to Sauber and then Verline kept going, oh, I can't race. They would not be going, oh, I admire his maturity. They'd be going, get in that fucking car, will you? But they're not. And because they're not, I think something's going on in the background. Regarding payments and regarding funds or sponsorship or potential deals in the future um, that are affecting it. So, because I gave him minus five because I thought it were fitness last time, I can only give him plus five this time to equal it out. So he starts on a level playing field should he arrive at Bahrain. Uh, but yeah, that is the end of the Cruel Wall. We have finished once again. And yeah, thank you very much for the support on this series, guys. And I will see you all for the next one in Bahrain, where we will feature JD Gaming. Uh, so we're going to be in for a good one with that, because he likes Hamilton and he likes Stroll. So, hmm, see what we'll score him, eh? But yes, so until next week, I hope you enjoyed this video. And yeah. There you go. Much love. Goodbye. Au revoir. Ta-ra.